Hey everyone, it's Matt from IGN, and this is the video review of Super Mario Galaxy. This new 3D platformer arrives from Nintendo's Tokyo Studio, which developed DK Jungle Beat on GameCube. That was an underrated game, and I really recommend you check it out if you haven't already. Nintendo has really outwardly billed Galaxy as the spiritual sequel to Super Mario 64, and I think that's not just a gimmick, it really is accurate. This game really harkens back to that N64 classic, but it also has a very new feeling about it. I've said this before and I'll say it again, it is the best marriage of old and new. You have traditional analog control of Mario, but at the same time you have all these new Wii Remote controls in addition to some really fancy graphics on Nintendo's new system. Mario games have never been known for their storylines and this one's no different. Once again, Bowser's back and this time yet again he wants Peach. So, he invades the Mushroom Kingdom at night during a festival and armed with a fleet of spaceships, literally rips the castle from its foundation and whisks the princess off into outer space at which point Mario gives chase. Not exactly the most original tale, I know, but the production values are exceptional. In fact, if you go back and compare this to Mario Sunshine, whose opening cinema featured a rendered idle animation of Mario, of all things, uh, you're going to see just a dramatic difference, a huge improvement in the way this game is presented. And this attention to detail extends well beyond the opening cinematic and through to the final boss fight. With Mario Galaxy, you're getting a platformer that uses the Wii Remote, but doesn't really abuse it, thankfully. What I really mean by that is that the game knows its limits, so you are using analog control to control Mario, but at the same time, you utilize the Wii Remote simply pointing at the screen to pick up star shards about levels, or you can shake the Wii Remote to spin Mario, which is very useful in levels and feels very good. You don't ever feel that gimmicky sense that the Wii Remote has been pushed upon you simply because it's there. But at the same time, there are levels in which you will use the Wii Remote in unique gesture ways. For instance, there is a level where you have to ride atop a glass ball, and you hold the Wii Remote like a flight stick to control Mario. There's also a stage in which you have to ride atop a manta ray, and you control the animal by tilting the Wii Remote left and right, as though you were turning a lock and key, and that too feels very good. As in every Mario game, control is spectacular, it's very tight, it's very responsive, and simply running around the levels is so much fun because you can long jump and you can string together triple jumps. I actually think the process of exploring levels or simply goofing off is more enjoyable than in any other Mario game because of the new gravity effects and also because of the way you can traverse levels. You can run upside down, you can run right side up, and you can jump off ledges, at which point all hell breaks loose gravity-wise. Part of the appeal then is to experiment, to simply try things and see what happens. For example, watch what happens when I jump off this tower. I had two fears going into the galaxy. The first is that all the levels in the game would look pretty much the same, clinging to a space motif in the same way that sunshine clung to an island motif. And second, that Mario would only traverse small planets, never really exploring or platforming atop giant land masses. I think you can see in the footage, however, that both those fears are pretty well unwarranted. The game not only features more than 40 galaxies to explore, all of them very different in design, but it does have those big levels, just as it has the small asteroids and space debris to navigate. But don't take my word for it. I'm going to shut up now and let you watch some of this video.
love the controls in the game just as I love the diversity in levels, but is there anything in Galaxy that's not quite perfect? Well, yes. The game features a secondary storyline about a character named Rosalina, and the tale itself is not only a bit of a downer, but it's really irrelevant to the main gameplay. Thankfully, the tale isn't forced upon you. You can skip it if you want to. Uh, you go to the library room in the hub world and you can watch it. If you don't go there, you'll never see it. The game features an automatic camera system which works very, very well most of the time, but every so often you'll hit a camera angle that's not quite ideal and uh, will obstruct the platforming ahead of you. And then there's the issue of difficulty. You can collect 120 stars in the game, but you can technically complete everything with only 60. And the quest to the first 60 stars, I think, is a bit easy, especially some of the boss fights, which aren't nearly as formidable as they appear. On the other hand, completing the game with 120 stars is a very different beast than completing the game with 60 stars, and the quest to that final goal is much more difficult, not to mention highly entertaining. Nintendo's Tokyo Studio has, with Galaxy, created a title that really pushes Wii and really feels like it was made for Nintendo's new system, and I have to give them credit for that. Not only is the art spectacular, but these are the best graphics on Wii, period. The characters look great up close, they animate fluidly, you have advanced lighting effects, advanced particle effects, you have specularity, you have refraction, you have reflection, you have transparencies, all of this running at a smooth frame rate throughout, and not only that, but everything runs in 480p progressive scan and 16x9 widescreen modes. On top of that, Galaxy's music, much of which is orchestrated, sounds amazing. The game even uses some of Wii's extras. For example, you can pick up a second Wii remote, head it to a friend, and he can help you out through the adventure. And also, you can take snapshots of your star achievement list and send them to buddies over the Wii Connect 24. Super Mario Galaxy is not only one of the best platformers I've ever played, it is the best game on Wii and the number one reason to pick up Nintendo's system right now. I've given the game a 9.7 and an Editor's Choice Award. Don't hesitate. Go get it. Ah!